Welcome back to another video. In today's demo, we're gonna talk about how to convert an IFC model into a Revit model. So one of our subs usually models, I believe it's in SolidWorks, and they typically send us IFC models. That Those models, we have to convert them, open them up in Revit, and make sure that we convert them to a Revit file, and that way we can insert them into our model coordination models in ACC, and that way we can see if there's any clashes and make sure that everything's aligning correctly just as design intended. So I found myself kind of struggling through this. Uh, I know there's multiple ways of doing this, uh, but the way that this IFC model was created this time, it kind of gave me some issues and I thought it'd be good to just record this video and show you guys how I went about this process. So now we're gonna go to Revit. We're gonna say new, new project. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up top on the left, say file, IFC, so opens an, opens an IFC file. So click there, then we're gonna go and grab that IFC file, click open. And this typically takes a little bit of time. So I'm gonna let it load and then I'll be back in just a second. All right, so now that the file opened, this error came up. I'm just gonna say on join elements, I'm just gonna ignore it. And like I said, I've worked with this vendor quite some time already and not sure what they did different this time. I, I think it's a new detailer and the models are giving me, uh, were giving me a, a somewhat of a hard time to convert them and from the typical workflow that I that I always do. So I had to do something a little different, uh, probably not ideal. I know there's multiple ways of doing things in Revit, but I found that this was what worked for me. So now that the model opened, we're gonna go to a 3D view and here is the model that the vendor gave me. Essentially, uh, what I'm looking for is all the miscellaneous metals. So this upper platform and then this the stairs right here. If I go and the first thing that I wanna do is just to make sure that uh, what coordinates did they give me the, this model in. So if I go and click up top over here and say spot coordinate, obviously this guy is not, uh, let me pick this one. Obviously this guy is not at the correct coordinates. If I go and say, show me the elevation Click apply, right? It shows that the correct elevation, but the northing and east thing is definitely not correct. So what I normally do to fix that is I download one of my design models. I download it to my local drive. And then the next thing I do is go up top, manage links. I'm gonna go add it. And this is my design model. I'm gonna say center to center. Click open, click close here, and then bring this guy in. So if I zoom out, we can see that my design model is down here and then my vendor's model is up here. The next step that I'm gonna do is I need to bring this vendor's model down and align it correctly with my actual design model and then we're gonna go and georeference it correctly. And I typically like to work with plan views and section views. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do in here is you can see this is my design model here, and then this is the actual vendor's model. All right, so now again, I'm gonna use a reference plane, and then I'm gonna use the edge of the wall here to try to align everything how it, how they, how it needs to be aligned. So I'm gonna extend this guy all the way down and then I can grab the entire model here. So I'm gonna say, grab this whole thing and then go back to this guy. And then I'm gonna say, move from here and then move to this guy. So now in plan view, I'm aligning it, let's call it east, west. And now the second thing that I'm gonna do is say move from here all right so it's right on top of each other everything looks pretty good we're gonna leave it there so now this is where I ran into a little bit of a problem when I was trying to, trying to align it uh, as far as the elevation. So if I go to this section here, you can see that it is aligned 
is right on top of each other. But now we need to grab this entire structure and then move it down. Probably not the most ideal way, but the way that worked for me. Um, the first thing that I did is I want to make sure I know drop a reference plane and I want to know how far up this wall do I need does this elevated platform is same with the stairs so I'm gonna say di on my keyboard measure the reference plane and I'm gonna measure to this to this column here and I can see it is 12 foot 9 and then from down here I think I want to use this edge of the slab so we're going to call it dimension is so I want to measure to this plate right here and this is 21 foot 2 and then as far as how far of the slab did it do did they model their steel uh, from so we're going to say from the slab that's an inch and a half and then how far so i know this is the top of the slab probably have to put it on wireframe so how far of the slab di for dimension the top of the slab to the bottom of this plate i have two and three eighths so now that in the vendor's model i have those uh one two three four reference reference points now I am going to do the same thing on my actual model. All right, so now what ended up happening is I was having a hard time trying to move this whole platform down. So what ended up working for me was probably not the most of the ideal way, as I said, is selecting it in 3D. So first of all, let me get rid of this generic models. So visibility graphics, and let me turn this guy off. And then let me turn the walls off as well. Now I'm only left with the actual platform. The problem that I ran into is that if I wanted to move some of these sections down, I would have to do it one by one. Not the most ideal. Even if I did select all instances in this view, for some reason, the way this IFC came in, it is not selecting everything in this view. Uh, even if I say in 3D, select all instances in this view, it is not selecting it. So I kind of got tired of dealing with that because I didn't want to move one by one. The easiest thing that I found to do was just select this whole upper platform, go back to my section. And then before I do that, I have to set my horizontal reference plane. So let me do that real quick. So RP. Let me do the vertical one and then I think I had another vertical here and then let me do this vertical one and then let me do this horizontal one. So let me extend these guys out a little bit more. Let me extend this one out some more too. We said that this was going to be 10 foot nine. Uh oh, hold on a second. Let's do this 10 foot five to this edge. And then 21 foot two to this edge. So if we go back down to hours, this is, and we do DI on the keyboard just to measure. So we're going to say 10 foot five. And then down here, the eye is going to be 21 foot two. All right. And then at the bottom is going to be an inch and a half from the slab. The eye. This is going to be one and a half inches and then two and three eighths from here. So the eye from the top of the slab to this guy is going to be two and three eighths of an inch. 
All right, so now those are our reference points. Now we know where to put the platform. So like I said, I think I already copied it to my clipboard. Now I'm going to click down here. There's a little drop down arrow, paste from clipboard. And then we are going to paste it right here to the side. And before I let go, I want to make sure that we said this bottom plate here. So I'm going to say move. If you let go or if you click finish, then you won't be able to move everything together. That's the problem I was running into. It was only moving one by one and I didn't want to do that. So now that I moved it all together, we'll move. Let's just say from here. And then let's move this guy all the way to here. All right. All right. So now that the top one is aligned, now we're going to go back to 3D. And then we are going to grab these stairs. We're going to say copy. Go back to section. I'm going to say click the little drop down paste from clipboard. I'm going to paste it right here. And then from this line, we want to make sure that we are an inch and a half to the bottom of the plate. So from this guy, so we're going to say move. And then we're going to move it right here to this reference plane. And now we said we were going to use the edge of this plate, I believe. So click move. I'm going to grab this guy from here. We're just going to go ahead and move it to this reference plane right here. Click finish. And so now if we put it in 3D and we look down here, now everything's overlaid on top of each other. Our design model, as you can see, is this one here, kind of uh, the white one that, that we're looking at. And our vendor model is this one, uh, a little bit orange kind of colored one. So that's exactly the best way I found to just grab the whole vendor model and align it with our design model. So the next thing that, we, that we're going to do is we're going to georeference this model. So we're going to go to manage coordinates, acquire coordinates, and then we're going to hover over the designer's model. That's the correct one. We're going to click that model. And now the coordinates have been acquired from this 46 SLST. Uh, that's the correct coordinates for the project that I'm working on. We're going to click close, make sure we save this guy. So I'm going to say save as project. I'm going to say save. And now I can go ahead and delete the vendor stuff because this is the old one that's not at the correct elevation. So selected delete. And now if I go down here and I just want to say a quick annotate spot coordinate, I know that that is the correct northing, easting, and elevation for my project where, where it's supposed to land. So the next thing that I can do is I can just click Revit links, turn that guy off, click OK, and only the vendor's model is left at the correct location, uh, georeferenced correctly. All right, and the last thing that I'm going to do once I gave it a name is I'm going to publish this 3D view to ACC. So to do that, I'm going to go to publish settings. I'm going to create a new set. I'm going to call it ACC views. Click OK. Then I'm going to uncheck that guy. I'm going to check ACC views. I'm going to say 3D views in the model. I'm going to select it. I'm going to say save and close. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to save it into ACC. So we're going to say save as, let me save it first because right now I have it saved to my local desktop. Now we're going to go save, save as, file, save as project. And then we are going to save it into Autodesk Docs. We're going to go to the subs model folder. And then there is a Revit file that I've, uh, that I've been working with in there. So I'm just going to select it, click save. Do you want to replace the existing file? I'm going to say yes. And now it is saving here. Now if we go to ACC, 
then this file should be updating from version 20 to version 21. All right, so as we can see here, this model uploaded now is version 21. It's, it finished processing, so we can see it here. And one of the cool things that we can do is if we go here to this compare option, both are 21 right now. So if I change this one to 20 and then we say overlay and show me what changed, you can actually see the things that change between both versions of the model. Uh, so I think this is pretty cool that you can do this here in just the web browser, the viewer in ACC. But now that the new version of this model has been uploaded, the next thing that we're gonna do is, let me just duplicate this page real quick so we can have another one to work with. We're gonna go to model coordination and now we're gonna bring it to the ACC models uh, where we have basically the federated models where we do all the clash coordination. So one thing that you want to make sure is that when you're setting this up the first time, I'm going to go to my active model. So this is my coordination spaces. Let me go back to this folder here real quick. So we have this JR whole folder and then we have this subfolder. The Revit models live in this 46 slush storage subfolder. So what I want to show you guys now is if I go to that coordination space and I go to this three dots, edit folders. What we need to make sure is that if I go to the JR Ho folder and I click the drop down right now, that 46 slush storage folder is not selected. So it is not including the models in there for coordination. So one thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that that guy is selected. This basically says add this folder only exclude, exclude subfolders. We're going to hit save and now essentially that model that we just updated lives or is part of these coordination models. If we hadn't checked that box with that well, for next to the next to the folder, then that model will not pull in here. All right. So now that this finished syncing, then if we go up here and say JR, then here is the model that we just uploaded. There it is, right? This is the latest and greatest. So now we're going to go to the views and then we're going to go to this building, which is where all the miscellaneous metals, the stairs and the elevated platform. This is where that model should be landing. As you can see right now, we only have this transparent one. Uh, this is the design. I typically like to put the design as transparent and then I will bring. So go down here to the bottom left select models and then this where this is where I will bring in the vendors model. So select and then it came in pink. No problem here. We're going to go down here to this guy and then I typically like to do like a kind of like a brown looking color. I don't think that's the right one. This is it. Um, that's the color that I normally give to this sub or vendor. Um, and then click close, then update view, click update. And then there it is. Now we can go in and do any clashes. See if this, this platform, just to make sure that it's not hitting any of these tanks and then that everything looks correct. All right. So I think this is, it, this is it for this example. I still have to bring in the handrail that goes all around that ele elevated platform. I will do that. I probably don't need to do another video for that. I know this video went a little bit longer than we expected, but pretty much that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys on the next video.